Want to know the number one lead generation site and process that I see right now? I got my buddy Kyle Overland with me today, and we're going to tell you exactly what you should be doing in your business right now. All right, today I'm joined by my buddy Kyle Oberlin. And listen, Kyle's got some amazing information for you that I know is going to help your business. When we're talking about Google Business Profile, in my opinion, one of the most, the best opportunities right now for you to grow your business in a low cost or no cost way. And we're going to talk about some of the strategies that Kyle's been doing and some of those things that are working. But Kyle, if you don't mind, introduce yourself to everybody. Tell them a little bit about the team and the area you serve, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. I'm Kyle Oberlin. I'm with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Professional Realty. I'm uh, in the Northeast Ohio area, uh, specifically the greater Akron Canton area. And I run a, uh, well, I guess what's now a large team, um, hasn't been large for long, but uh, we're about 13 agents, three staff, and uh, transactionally we'll do right around uh, 175 to 200 units this year. Awesome. Awesome. And Kyle, what I love is, is not only this, I mean, literally, and you know, we were a part of this and worked together with the Rethink Council um, for, you know, some of the folks that are doing some interesting things under 40 in the um, in the Berkshire Hathaway Home Services brand. And one of the things that's kind of interesting is, is I've watched you evolve. And what we're really going to talk about today is something that has really helped your business. And that's, and I know it's going to help other people. So let's talk a little bit about this. What, you know, I always, I always call it Google My Business because that's what it was for me for so long. But Google Business Profile, is something that you focused on. I'd love for you just to kind of give us an idea of what this, what kind of caught your attention about this and how you started by building this out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Jimmy, honestly, you had a lot to do with it. So, you know, meeting you at these rethink councils and, and talking with, with other producers, they, uh, you know, they've really opened my eyes to the fact that Google really is, is what runs the business world. I mean, they're the number one search engine um, in the world. Uh, what's the number two search engine? YouTube, right? YouTube is mm -hmm. also owned by Google. So, you know, Google is really one of those things that you have to be all in on um, because ultimately uh, you don't have many websites that are treated as a verb and noun and adjective, you know, it's really an all in website. And so uh, just knowing that and and really hearing it from, from other producers and yourself, uh, you know, is really what kind of led me to, to start really building out uh, that profile and, and starting to get those reviews. Yeah. And you know what, Kyle, as, as we've talked about this before, the biggest thing is, is the first thing that somebody's going to do before they choose um, somebody to work with is they're going to go on Google and they're going to put certain search terms in or they're going to Google you and look. And what uh, this does is by producing this and getting this set up properly is it gives you the ability to frame who you are um, and it's free from that standpoint of setting this up. And so uh, what I'd love to do is just kind of go through, let's talk about now, once you got started in this, what did you do to really, what was the, what was the area that you focused on? Because there's so many things in this that it can overwhelm you sometimes. And what was it that you really focused in to make sure that you were getting and taking full advantage of it? Yeah. So when I started, I really started with the, the Google uh, pay-per-click, um, but quickly realized that that doesn't really take advantage of you, your personality, your reviews. Uh, you know, anybody could do point per, uh, pay-per-click. I could set up a, a PPC campaign for you. You know, it, it's just one of those things that it's not really yours. Um, it's usually ran by an ad agency. There's a lot of retargeting. It, it's very high hanging fruit in a sense when, when it comes to lead gen. Uh, and so after trying that for a few months, it, it really, uh, you know, kind of dawned on me that I need to try a different approach with Google. And so that's when I leaned into the local service ads, uh, which for those who don't know what local service ads are, um, if I went on uh, Google and I just typed in, uh, say, 30A uh, Realtors, um, you would get kind of a horizontal banner across the top. And uh, typically there's three or four uh, different agents that will be shown there. Um, and it just is very brief. It, it just has their review count, um, their composite review score. So, you know, five star, four star, whatever, um, and uh, just their name. And so, you know, it's you don't have much to work with there. And so reviews are, are important in that sense. Yeah, so that let's let's focus on that because we are in the review economy, and um, you know, in order to stand out in those LSA ads, the biggest part is is in a lot of cases is having those reviews and having that higher um, number of reviews really does make a difference. What did you do to start getting your first few reviews, and then what did you do to kind of put some gas on the fire, so to speak? Yeah, and, and to be quite frank, I was terrible at getting reviews on Google my entire career until basically last year, and I could still be better, but. You know, I was always pushing people to Zillow and to places like that for, for reviews. But, 
you know, as I start realizing that the Google reviews are kind of the first reviews people see, you know, if they Google your name, they're going to see the Google ones before they get to your Zillow profile and, and see those reviews. And so, uh, you know, I started out with just a few, um, you know, friends, family, a couple past clients here and there. Uh, but as I really started leading into it, I actually got a little creative with it and uh, kind of did a review contest amongst the team. And so, um, I kind of put out there, you know, that whoever gets the most reviews, um, you know, gets X bonus and for every review you get, you know, X bonus as well. And, um, thinking that, you know, I could probably get 50, 60 extra reviews and, uh, you know, pay out a few hundred bucks and, you know, it would kind of be mutually beneficial. But, uh, by the end of it, uh, I was actually paying out a little over $6,000 and ended up with about 300 reviews. So, um, you know, it did a great purpose, but, uh, you know, at the same time cost me a little bit of money. Yeah, I'm sure that that was an investment, though, that's paying back now. Obviously, as you have that now, I think I just looked around 389 reviews, which is huge. Um, but I do want to encourage people that, listen, if you're a single agent out there or you're an agent that doesn't have as many past clients, the good thing about Google is, is these are not um, verified sales lead, you know, sales that can do these reviews. So did you, you mentioned kind of about friends and family and some of those folks. Who did you utilize to begin with? It wasn't just clients that you would work with, was it or was it or was it? I mean, you want to get in front of your sphere too. It's just kind of like your Facebook business page. You know, anybody can leave a recommendation on your Facebook business page. Uh, and, and so really it's just leveraging your, your sphere of influence to get those reviews up. And, you know, it's really important to be cognizant of what your competition is in the market, because, you know, for me, what really led me to the need to have a ton of reviews is I'm in a very team dominated area. Uh, I have the, the largest KW team in the state locally. I have the largest Remax team in the state locally. And so you know, if I'm competing with the local service ads and, and somebody Googles, you know, Akron Realtors, they're going to have a bunch of people that have hundreds of reviews. And so, you know, for me, I had to be competitive, but it might not be in, you know, your market super necessary if it's more of a volume based market. Yeah, I think there is. There's a couple things. And I mean, all you've done and really because you're running the ads, you've just focused on the review side. You Have you done anything else or do you have any plans to expand on what you're doing as far as just the free side of it? And then I want to get into the ad side of it. Yeah, you know, so one thing I, I haven't really been great with is getting content onto my Google business profile, you know, getting more photos up, um, getting some video assets up, you know, there's a lot that I could be doing that I kind of have on the to do list. Um, you know, for me, it was really the reviews, just some of the basics, and, you know, kind of just building out the, the information side of things. Um, but I'm, I'm honestly really excited to kind of to grow it from there. Hey, um, this brings up a good point because come, some of the things that we've done with some agents that have not gone the review side, and we've had agents that literally in two months, we've been able to generate a couple million dollars worth of sales organically through Google My Business. So let me let me just mention a couple of things on that, and then I want to get back to the ad portion. So there seems to be like 100 photos, for whatever reason, for us has seemed to be the tipping point. Now, you may be thinking, gosh, I don't want to load 100 photos. And I wouldn't suggest that you load 100 photos at one time. Because the consistency over time shows Google that you're involved, but you could load 10 photos a day for 10 days. And these could be photos about your area. This could be local iconic you know, landmarks. This could be houses that you sold. This could be reviews where instead of taking those all those reviews you've got on Realtor or Google or, or uh, not on Google, but on uh, Zillow, taking photos or screenshots of those and then posting those as pictures on your Google, on your Google business profile page. What this does and what we found was is that you can't necessarily give a description in there. So what we did is we came in and we titled the photos. In other words, the file of the folder, the file of the photo, we titled it with what a search term might be for our area. So if it was like what you mentioned, a 30A realtor, and we had a review, we would say 30A realtor review, and then we would upload that. It gives a little bit of Google juice there as far as you know the search engine optimization on some of these on some of these folders. For whatever reason, that's really helped us. Or if we were doing something like it was, I'm just going to use this watercolor, you know, iconic watercolor. Uh, go front pool or whatever it is, we would put that in the title of the photo and then upload the photo with that title, which helps us a little bit. The other thing that we've done is, is we're just encouraging if you're doing some of your, um, if you're doing general content for social media, for video, for whatever, utilize that by sharing it also on your Google business profile page. So think of it this way. 
If you are doing a market overview, make sure that you're uploading that as well there. Again, consistency is what helps over time. And just make sure when you're filling out your Google business profile that you're answering all the questions. You're putting in your phone number, your address, your, all, these, all these different things they're asking for. Make sure it's complete because the more complete it is, the better and more likely you are that when they first see this, you're going to say, that's a professional agent. That's somebody I'm looking to work with. Now, the biggest thing that we're seeing like you are is, is that when we're talking about the difference in buying leads through Realtor.com, through Zillow, through pay-per-click, there's nothing better than these LSA ads um, that we're seeing right now. So can you go into kind of what that looks like for you, what the cost for leads are, kind of some of the results you're seeing and what that really, um, how it's been benefiting, if you don't mind. So, um, and one quick note on what you said too, one thing I found that helps a lot also is you know, if you're going to be targeting a certain area and your brokerage has an office in that area, make that your address. Uh, you know, the, the, generally speaking, the, the public likes a quote unquote local realtor. And even if you know that area, the, you know, better than any other area, uh, you want to make sure it, it looks like you're at least local to to where you're running these ads. Um, but with the uh, with the local service ads in particular, um, we've seen a lot of success with them, you know, and it's kind of been a roller coaster because, of course, as a as a team, uh, you know, I'm in the perspective of trying to figure out a way to scale it. Um, so, you know, that we could get into that here in a little bit. But um, generally speaking, uh, you're looking at uh, it's kind of market based pricing, kind of not. But in my area, it's uh, about seventeen dollars um, a lead. Uh, for the most part, which, you know, if you compare that to market price pricing with Zillow in my area, it's about $225 a lead. So, you know, mm -hmm. the, it's, a, it's really a fraction of the cost uh, when it comes to a Zillow lead. And, uh, you know, we found these to just be a lot more intentful too. Uh, you know, with Zillow, you get a lot of people that click around and, you know, you you get about maybe, a, you know, if you're good, about 15% or um, conversion percentage on, on Zillow. Um, most people are probably 7 to to 9% or so. Uh, but with these local service ads, I mean, really, we've been closing at about a 35% rate. And so you have a lot more intentful people that that come through there um, at a fraction of the cost. Um, you know, and, and really, I, I found, too, that they they come to you with with a little bit of inherent layer of trust because they're they're seeing your reviews front and center and, and they're kind of coming to you um, knowing that you're, you know, an expert. Good. Nice. So you're saying basically for a closed lead, if you're running a 35 percent um, range here, I mean, you're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of, let's say, 30, about fifty dollars per closed transaction, almost something in that range per for these leads. That's incredible numbers. And uh, and listen, it's not ever that way everywhere. And obviously, the things you've done with the reviews help with that as far as the quality quality of the people you're coming through. But it's pretty amazing. Have you I know we talked about this in the past about what the difference would be if the money that you spent on Zillow, you were spending on um, these Google business profile or these LSA ads. Have you thought about that? What would the difference be as far as the numbers in your business? So as I kind of start having the time to, to really track the ROI on this stuff, you know, it's really been eye opening for me, um, you know, because I'm in a, a position where I'm not really running with any of these leads. You know, the leads are really to feed the team. And so, uh, you know, Zillow and, and most lead gen is, uh, that you're paying monthly for is really only profitable to a team if uh, if the team leader is actually working some of that business as well. Um, but with the uh, local service ads uh, compared to Zillow, you know, I kind of did the math. And, you know, of course, there's some factors like, you know, I'm not sure there's even enough leads from local service ads to match what what we're getting from Zillow. Uh, but if, you know, with all things equal, um, instead of about break even on Zillow, we'd be up, you know, probably close to six figures um, is kind of what the math worked out uh, if, if it was all in on, on local service versus all in on Zillow. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, talk to me a little bit about because obviously with running a team and I know, I mean, you're 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 involved in investments. You've got a number of you, other business. I mean, you're doing a lot of different things. How do you stay focused on what it is that you're wanting to do? I mean, we've talked about this in the past and obviously there's some things like we were talking about this and you're like, I really need to do more photos. I really need to do that. What, what do you focus on and how do you keep kind of organized with what you're doing? Yeah. So, you know, I kind of adopted, uh, you know, really the the philosophy of from rethink of, you know, done is better than perfect. So just trying to get everything going and then, you know, kind of fine tune it later, you know, maybe in the at least in Ohio, when it gets cold, uh, you see a lot of markets slow down. And so, you know, maybe your your November through February uh, tasks is to perfect everything. So, um, you know, that's kind of how I how I stay focused is, is you know, just kind of an organized uh, mess, so to speak. <laughs> but um, when it comes to scaling something like local service ads, you know, somebody like me, it is tough because, you know, you kind of have to make that decision of, you know, is the phone 
number going to be your phone number? Is it going to be a Google voice number that you have staff? Um, are you going to figure out, like, are you going to use call rail or something that could, uh, you know, broadcast it to multiple people on the team? Um, do you use a, a answering service, you know, in addition to going to you, you know, there's so many different pieces to it. And, you know, ultimately you need the, the people that know how to show value and handle objections answering that phone call. And so typically you want it to be the most experienced person, but, um, it's just not realistic, um, you know, in a busy setting. Yeah. Hey, um, Kyle, let's talk a little bit about kind of now knowing what you know now with, especially in, in, in particular to Google business profile. Um, maybe there's somebody out there that hasn't done it yet. Um, because the statistics are crazy to see this. And I think this is a perfect example. Um, you know, we talk about all these things you need to do with Google, my, with Google, my business, the way I call it, Google business profile to really make it perfect. But it, this is a perfect example. Um, I was talking to someone in the industry that did some research and said that almost 90% of agents don't even have their page set up or their profile set up. Um, you, you mentioned a little bit about you're seeing some of this where there just doesn't seem like there's as much competition in this area right now. That will change. Um, if you were an agent that maybe hasn't done this before, what would you say to them and what would you encourage them to do first? And how would you go about building that from the beginning? So first and foremost, you want to get the, the legwork out of the way. Um, not only just with the profile itself, but also the requirements that local service ads requires, um, because, uh, you know, I think that is a big reason why a lot of agents don't do the local service ads is, I'll be honest, it, it is quite a bit of work, um, because uh, the way they, they kind of frame it to the public is Google screened. And so what that screening process is, is a background check. Um, verification of address, you know, so they have to send you a postcard to the address that you put on there. Um, they, uh, if you're, uh, you had to submit your broker's in, uh, insurance information, um, license numbers, all that kind of stuff. And so just, it is a little bit of a legwork. And, you know, I think it took me probably about a month by the from start to finish to get it done. A lot of that was just the, their background checks are extremely slow. Um, but, uh, you know, so if I was a new agent, Get that stuff done now. You know, don't do it when you're busy. Do it when you're slow. Um, start getting those reviews. Get some sort of process implemented within your business to where you are asking for those Google reviews, not just um, to your sphere of influence, but on all of your uh, transactions as well. Um, and then from there, you know, once you start, uh, you have your profile, your Google screened, you are starting to get reviews. Um, start adding content, like you had mentioned earlier, you know, start getting those photos up there, getting those videos up there and, and really making it, you know, kind of almost similar to how your Facebook business page looks. You know, you want to make it, um, you want to show your value to, to these people that are looking you up on Google. Yeah, um, Kyle, it's a great point of that there is a process here and a lot of people just get stuck in the process and never just complete it, but it's well worth it. And, um, you know, a lot of times the little bit of hard that we're talking about and the time frame it takes, that's exactly the um, ability you have to really set yourself apart from everybody else. So um, this is going to be really good. So um, let's talk about kind of going forward. What is your plans for it going forward? What are you looking to do? Are you going to go in more? Or are you going to try to change some things? And then we'll wrap up with that. Yeah, so for me, you know, our biggest pinch point uh, was um, how that calls routed, and so uh, you know, the kind of looking in the in the future, uh, definitely scaling it up. You know, the opportunity is is a no brainer. You know, if I keep spending what we're spending on Zillow versus this, I mean, it's just silly. You know, you have uh, almost triple the conversion rate at a fraction of the cost. You know, so why would you not do this? Um, and so how we're personally going to handle it is actually just this week, I signed on with a uh, like a call answering forwarding service. And so um, if I'm not answering within three three rings, it's going to them. They're answering it, uh, taking some notes. Um, they do have real estate conversation experience, you know, so there's a lot of different companies out there that do this kind of stuff. But I wanted to make sure they actually could have these substantive real estate conversations if they do come up. Um, and then getting that also um, integrated within the CRM. So instead of it just, you know, a message going to my email or my staff's email, having that parse directly into the CRM and go through our lead routing system to where, it, you know, it's really just another lead source, but with a much higher conversion and just integrates a lot better. It's good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, Kyle, I appreciate you sharing the, um, this. Obviously, I know you're having success with this. Love, love, love seeing your business grow the way it does. Appreciate everything. Hey, if somebody has a referral coming up your way, um, just if you don't mind, tell them uh, how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, I would love to help anyone looking in Northeast Ohio, greater Cleveland, Akron, Canton area. I cover pretty much all of it. Uh, so you could get a hold of me via my cell phone. It's 
5807 uh, or shoot me an email. It's Kyle at the real estate dot pro. You're the best, Kyle. Appreciate you. Um, all of the thing. Hey, listen, if you got some value out of this, make sure you reach out and let Kyle know. Hope this has been helpful and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.